I call this discussion hacking your diabetes, your type 2 diabetes, how to get rid of or at least substantially minimize your type 2 diabetes or pre-diabetes. Now these are the kinds of conversations I have in my undoctored book. Undoctored, why healthcare has failed you and how you can become smarter than your doctor. Also in the undoctored website programs. This is all about empowering you to get rid of health conditions on your own and be as freed of the healthcare system as possible. And you know what? The results you obtain by doing it on your own are superior to the kind of health that the healthcare system would have provided, which is a health only through drugs and procedures. That's not what health is about. Health is about being healthy, right? Feeling good, looking good, uh, uh, and doing it with as little help from medication and procedures as possible. The exact opposite of what the healthcare system wants for you. So these are the conversations that I conduct in all undoctored programs. So let's talk about hacking type 2 diabetes. How do you do that? Well, I should mention first, I was a type 2 diabetic 25 years ago. I was jogging five miles or more a day. I was a vegetarian. I had cut out all animal products and oils and ate only healthy whole grains, fruits, and vegetables. And I had a blood sugar run just, just for laughs, and it was 161, clearly diabetic. I verified it. Yep, I was a type 2 diabetic. Well, I went off that dietary program, started adding back oils and meats and animal products and uh, not eating so many grains back then, and I became non-diabetic. And to this day, 25 years later, I have perfect blood sugars on no medication whatsoever. I have fasting glucoses in the 80s and a hemoglobin A1C of 4.8%, which is perfect. Below 5.0% is perfect. I just do the undoctored basic strategies, the core strategies like vitamin D, fish oil, cultivation of bowel flora, no, no wheat, no grains. So you can do the same. And at least 90% of people, even if you've had type 2 diabetes for years, can become non-diabetic. Some will just become minimally diabetic with far better, far improved blood sugars. An occasional person will need one drug like metformin. Very rarely does somebody have to remain on more than that, like an injectable agent or insulin. It does happen, but it's very uncommon. So be hopeful that you have the potential to become minimally diabetic and even more likely non-diabetic. The exception are the, is the occasional person who did so much damage to their pancreatic beta cells that produce insulin from really high blood sugars for a long time or very high triglycerides for a long time. They can do damage to their pancreas and can never recover and will always have diabetes. That does happen, but it's uncommon. So how do you do this? Well, there's two parts to this discussion. First, you limit carbohydrates. So oddly, the American Diabetes Association, Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, and others tell you to eat essentially huge quantities of carbohydrates, grains and sugars. Some even specify quantities like 200 grams a day. If I went on 200 grams a day, and a lot of people I know, you would become diabetic. Or if you had diabetes, your diabetes would become worse. You'd gain weight, you'd, have, you'd develop a need for more medication, you'd go on insulin, you'd gain another bunch of weight because insulin causes weight gain. And then the spiral continues. More insulin, more weight gain, more insulin, more weight gain. And you get people on these extraordinary high doses of insulin because they were told to eat lots of carbohydrates like grains. So we do the opposite. We eat almost no carbohydrates, no grains, no sugars. And we put a limit on our carbohydrate exposure of no more than 15 grams of net carbohydrates per meal. We have to do a calculation. Net carbohydrates. Net carbohydrates equals total carbohydrates minus fiber. Very easy. Because fiber is classified as a carbohydrate, but it's not metabolized as a carbohydrate or a sugar. It's, it's not metabolized at all by humans. It's metabolized by bowel flora, but not by you. So we do that simple calculation and stay below 15 grams net carbs per meal. That alone will cause your blood sugar to plummet within the first 24 hours. So much so that your insulin often has to be cut in half and drugs like oral drugs like glimepiride, glyburide, and, and uh, glipizide have to be cut dramatically or eliminated. You should do this with a doctor who empowers you. Most doctors do not. Most doctors can put you on medications that have no idea how to get you off and think this would be silly. So it would help to find a healthcare practitioner who can help you do this safely because we do not want any hypoglycemia. We want no hypoglycemia. I prefer to see someone with a higher blood sugar, as high as 200 milligrams per deciliter, uh, but no low blood sugars, because high blood sugars are a long-term uh, stress. Low blood sugars are an acute danger, okay? 
So no low blood sugars, work with your healthcare provider or find one who will empower you and help you get off those medications. Because you will become less diabetic very rapidly because you've cut the foods that raise blood sugar. Makes sense, right? Take the, if you have a problem with blood sugars, take out the foods that raise blood sugar. Very, very easy. And don't limit fat. Eat the fat on your pork chop or your steak. Use more olive oil. Use more organic butter. Use more coconut oil. Eat more avocados because they're satiating. They smooth out your blood sugars. There's another trick that I call the no change rule that you can use with your glucose meter. So if you have diabetes, you likely have a glucose meter and finger sticks and all the, all the equipment you need to check your finger sticks. We follow no change rule. You want no change in blood sugar from the pre-meal blood sugar to the 30 to 60 minute later blood sugar. Not two hours like your doctor told you. That's for other purposes. That's for monitoring this, the uh, effectiveness of your insulin or, or drugs. That's not what we're asking, right? We want to know what your peak blood sugar is after eating a food. And we don't want a peak. We want no change. We want the no change rule. So if your blood sugar is 130 prior to the meal, you want a blood sugar of no higher than 130 30 to 60 minutes after the start of the meal. If your blood sugar goes from, say, 130 to 280 because you had some oatmeal, don't eat the oatmeal, right? Well, you should have eliminated that already. It's a grain. It's a horrible grain. So what if you had steak, asparagus, and some mashed potatoes, and blood sugar goes from 130 to 240? Well, the culprit will be the carbohydrate, right? You did not uh, adhere to the 15-gram net carb rule, and you had too much of a carbohydrate, but that will prove it to you. So next time you have the meal like that, either eliminate the mashed potatoes or cut way back on portion size and then check once again to see if you got away with it. But there should be no change in blood sugar. What happens if you do this over and over and over again? Fasting blood sugar comes down and the after 30, 60 minute after meal blood sugar also starts to drop down. Need for medications drops. And at some point you become non-diabetic or at least as minimally diabetic as possible. Third, there is a third step, and that is engage in all the uh, uh, strategies in the undoctored, wild, naked, unwashed program, like vitamin D and cultivation of bowel flora and fish oil, because each and every component contributes to improving insulin resistance. That's the underlying process, right, that causes diabetes, your body's poor responsiveness to insulin. So all the components of the undoctored program contribute to reversing insulin resistance. So first step is to recognize diabetes is a choice. The vast majority of people can choose to have diabetes or choose not to have diabetes, or at least have as little blood sugar problems as possible. The problem is most doctors have no idea how to make you non-diabetic. They sure know how to dispense their medications to treat your diabetes once it's been caused by flawed dietary advice, but most have no idea how to undo it. So you've got to do it on your own though you do need the help of a healthcare provider to get off the drugs. The undoctored program is not dangerous. The drugs are dangerous as you become healthier, okay? That's an, that's an important distinction. So do it safely, no hypo hypoglycemia, but you have very high hopes of not being a diabetic, contrary to popular opinion.